Biochar has become increasingly popular over the past decade as an apparently no-brainer addition to your garden soil. But what is biochar and is it something that you actually should pay attention to or is it just a fad? With seemingly endless styles of gardening out there from natural farming to low maintenance gardening to permaculture, jadam, no-till, regenerative, closed loop, you name it, it can be hard to know where something as seemingly benign as charcoal fits in. But after watching this video, you should have a little bit better of an understanding of not only why almost every gardener recommends using charcoal, but how to use it effectively and how to avoid a potentially crippling mistake that could cost you an entire growing season if you're not careful. So what is biochar and why are people obsessed with it? Well, over the past few decades, anthropologists and researchers have published numerous reports and books on something called terra preta. Now these are per Portuguese words that translate to black earth, referring to the incredibly fertile soil discovered in the Amazonian rainforest. Large amounts of crushed charcoal was discovered across the mid 20th century. And in the early 2000s, it began to be hypothesized and then largely agreed upon that the charcoal found in these soils was not a natural occurrence, nor was it placed there randomly. Thousands of years ago, it is thought that indigenous people groups deliberately used charcoal mixed with waste products and plant debris to create massive amounts of fertility in the soil. These, of course, are not the only ancient cultures to utilize waste streams in such a way. But the question remains, why? Why did they do it? Why does it work to create fertility in the soil? Well, it turns out that there is a lot more to this stuff than immediately meets the eye. Just looking at a piece of activated charcoal, it would seem just like, well, a burned piece of wood. But in reality, in a gram-sized piece of activated charcoal, conservative estimates say that there are 1,000 square meters of surface area and up to 3,000 square meters or 32,000 square feet worth of surface area on the upper end. Now, how is that possible is the question that I asked when I first heard that. Well, it has to do with the incredibly porous nature of truly activated charcoal. When a piece of wood has been has burned off all non-carbon material and it's doused with cold water, a process called quenching, the charcoal undergoes an instantaneous recomposition as it is filled with steam, giving it an incredible level of high porosity. If you're curious about how to do this, we actually have a whole video just dedicated to the making of activated charcoal. Now, why does porosity matter? Well, while we can't exactly see the layer upon layer upon layer of surface area, microscopic organisms, microbes, can. For good reason, pieces of activated charcoal are sometimes referred to as microbe hotels. These bits and pieces can house billions of microbes in a relatively small amount of space, along with other plant nutrients. When you consider what could happen when you put a football field's worth of microbes into a square inch space in your garden bed, you might be able to see the potential effect that biochar can have in your garden soil. Now, what happens when you put activated charcoal directly on or into the soil without loading it up with microbes and nutrients? Well, this is that thing that I was talking about earlier that could cause you an entire growing season. You see, activated charcoal wants to become biochar, or maybe microbes want to populate activated charcoal. Either way, there's a natural equilibrium seeking that happens when carbons get introduced to nitrogens. If you know much about composting, you're perhaps familiar with browns and greens or carbons and nitrogens. Carbons, like wood chips, dried leaves, cardboard, and straw, soak up nitrogen found in things like manure, grass clippings, coffee grounds, and food scraps. These are nitrogen-rich materials, and they balance each other out. So what happens when you add activated charcoal to soil? Well, activated charcoal is nearly 100% carbon material. Not to mention, yet again, that it has quite the carrying capacity with its massive surface area. So introducing raw charcoal to the soil will rob your plants of nitrogen and soak up the microbes and other beneficial nutrients. Your plants will be essentially neutered and won't be able to accumulate the nutrients necessary to grow healthy and strong. That said, if you make the mistake of pouring charcoal all over your fields and garden beds, you will only suffer one bad season, most likely. By the next season, your charcoal will be happily charged up with microbes and nutrients and won't have the need to soak up anymore. In fact, it will likely be ready and willing to impart these stored up nutrients for your plants to enjoy. All that said, no, you can't easily kill your entire garden just with activated charcoal. You'll just delay a growing season, which can be painful. 
That said also, what if you didn't have to delay anything? And that's right, activated charcoal is best utilized in the garden when it is pre-charged with nutrients and microbes and thereby turned into biochar, our beloved hipster garden amendment. Let's talk about how to charge up your charcoal. The first and most obvious way to use it is as a carbon source in your composting operation. Like I said before, activated charcoal is a completely carbon material, meaning that we use it sparingly, a little really goes a long way, and we make sure that our compost pile has plenty of nitrogen-rich material. You can do something simpler and just mix it up directly with cow or horse manure, and then you just wanna make sure that the manure has decomposed enough so that it doesn't burn your plants when you apply it. In our composting, we add a bit of charcoal about probably a centimeter thick every three layers or so. The second main way that we use our charcoal is in our worm bins. Worms and the microbes that they coexist with love charcoal and they make great biochar. A worm bin is really a perfect location for charcoal. We've got moisture control, heavy nutrient environments, lots of microbes. Charcoal and worms are a match made in heaven. We just add a couple handfuls every so often and the charcoal also keeps things from going anaerobic in the bin and controls odors and smells coming out of the worm castings. I personally really like the smell of fresh worm castings, but some people struggle with that. Now, beyond these two main uses, we also use activated charcoal in a variety of other ways. We use large chunks as water filters for our chicken's watering system. These chunks will soak up algae and other biology present in the water. We also use it as chicken bedding, since it is completely made of carbon and soaks up nitrogen from the chicken's poop, helping to control odors. We also give chickens access to consume it. Chickens are in large part intuitive eaters, so they won't overdo it with a charcoal, and a little bit can really help control gut imbalances or bacterial overgrowths. Outside of chickens, we use charcoal in our bokashi buckets to help soak up excess moisture in the buckets. We incorporate charcoal in IMO3 and IMO4 production. Uh, you can also add natural liquid fertilizers, LAB and other Korean natural farming amendments to charcoal with a little bit of molasses or brown sugar as a microbe food. Just let it sit for about a month or until the charcoal seems to have soaked up most of the liquid and then you can apply that stuff directly to your soil. They're legitimately what seem like endless uses for this stuff. And guys, that is how to not kill your garden with biochar. Charge it up beforehand and you'll be just fine. If you have any other questions or want to see anything else on this topic, please leave a comment below. Of course, we want to hear from you about how you charge your charcoal. Would love to hear about some of the other creative approaches. If you enjoy this video and you want to see more content like it in the future, give our video a like and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.